it's a quartzite rainbow. Yeah, yeah. Nice. So the gas is either 9%, 16%, or 38%. I don't want you to think we don't have our stuff together. We totally do. But we were confident we had enough fuel, propane for the night, so we didn't go fill up. But it might be a cold night. There is nothing wrong with your video stream. We are controlling your feed. Sit quietly and experience the awe and mystery from the outer limits of the open road. Quartzite rainbow. Yeah, yeah. Nice. We are back in quartzite for a few days while we figure out what we're going to do about our broken heater, because at least while we're out in the desert, we can run our generator at night. So we're going to take this opportunity to run by the tomb of High Jolly in quartzite. Now, High Jolly was a Syrian who came to the United States to run the U.S. Camel Corps. Secretary of War Jefferson Davis originally approved the plan to experiment with camels in the Southwest. He sent 33 of them out to Texas in 1856. High Jolly came over as their caretaker until the War Department abandoned the project just a few years later. Haj Ali, or High Jolly, became a living legend, moving to Quartzsite and living there until his death in 1902. So we're in Quartzsite, and we just got two ice cream cones. <laughs> Guess how much? Two ice cream cones. There were no, um, there were no prices listed, so I assumed the worst. But um, yeah, put your put your uh, thoughts in the comments below. And we'll see if you're right. What's the most you would pay for two, four scoops of ice cream?
we're home? Level, we're home. All right, we're gonna double check the tank status. We think we have enough gas for one more night before we have to refill. Turn on my Bluetooth here. Now it says 9%. Well, that's not helpful. This is the High Jolly BLM site. And that is court site down there in the distance, so we're basically right on the highway, but the advantage is we've got internet. So uh, these days that's a huge advantage. We've just spent days and days and days with no service whatsoever, so we'll, we'll take it. So we just pulled over to this spot, nice and level. Last night was horrific because we were so unlevel. So it's fantastic to have a spot that's actually pretty decent. So the gas is either 9%, 16%, or 38%. And it's going to be really cold. It's already really cold. It's going to be cold tonight. So I don't know what's going on. So suddenly our sensor is not working. So <sighs> wish us luck. I don't want you to think we don't have our stuff together. We totally do. But we were confident we had enough fuel, propane for the night, so we didn't go fill up. But it might be a cold night. Did our laundry today, so now it's time to put the laundry back away. mountains in the distance. So this is not an ideal situation. We lost use of the Aldi last night. Well, this morning. The Aldi was working fine, but the control panel is not functioning. So you can't, can't really use the Aldi. We had to turn off the power to try and reset it. So then the Aldi went off and now of course we can't get it back on. So um, we went to, we had to drive to Parker. We drove into Quartzsite and to look for an electric heater and there were none to be found. So we had to go to Parker. It's about 35 miles away to the Walmart, which is not my favorite Walmart. That's the point at which I also found out they're, <coughs> they're out of RV toilet paper. Anyway, we uh, found a ceramic heater and we're gonna have to run the generator tonight because it's gonna be 34, 38, something like that. So super cold. And uh, we don't really have a lot of options tonight. We put in a request for service in Mesa and we just have to wait for them to get back to us. But now of course it's the weekend and we're supposed to go to California on Sunday. But um, that plan is definitely up in the air. So we'll see how it goes. We bought a security cable so that we can secure the generator tonight. So Bill's trying to figure out what to connect it to here. We'll keep the honest people honest, but it's not really theft proof. No, uh uh. No. Yep. yep, that's the thing. The new ceramic heater. The new drip. Bad plumbing? Nope. Improvise, adapt, overcome. Pepsi bottle. Pepsi bottle. <laughs> It did get pretty cold that night. We are from Michigan, but there is a reason that we are out west because we are just tired of the cold. So we don't very much appreciate it.
Meanwhile, the Aldi went from bad to worse, and in addition to a panel that wasn't working, we now have a leak. Into the packs. That was, that's the thinking. Road fix. Yeah. You can't fix the circus board. Circus. The circus board. Yeah, the circus board. <laughs> When you're out here in quartzite, there is a lot of quartz, quartz on the ground, and so it is a good place to find rocks. Of course, I'm in a very highly populated area right now, so, you know, but not everybody's looking for rocks. I'm down in this wash looking for rocks. Bill's gonna do something else, I don't know what. Right, yes. Bill had mentioned that there was a rock form out here, and I see it. People made some Rock formations out here. Okay, love. Okay, love. Nice. And what goes with love? Of course, peace. Peace and love out here in the desert outside Quartzite. Definitely lost track of Bill at this at this point. He's that little red dot <laughs> off there in the distance. Little red dot of Bill. time has come, the time that comes in all boondockers lives, where you must, thou must leave thy campsite to go dump all of the items, trash, black and gray. Time and to so, take out the trash. And so we go forth boldly, uh, willing to spend money, because that's what's going to take. You know. First stop is going to be trash. Wait, isn't trash that way? No. Okay. First stop is going to be taking care of the trash. The trash trash uh, deposit is free so that's the best part the free part I like the free things uh, the oldie transfer station where trash dump is free on Sunday through Wednesday but don't have any trash the rest of the week in parts and pieces. Uh, yeah. We made it from the uh, beginning down to Texas at the halfway point. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty fascinating. There's a lot less on it now than there was the first time we did it like 15 years ago. Right. A little bit less each year. Yeah, it was but, pretty, yeah. very interesting. Yeah, well yep. fun. We enjoyed it. Have a good one. So as it turns out, the trash man used to be a lobster man in Rhode Island. <laughs> Who knew? I mean, you just never know. People from all walks. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. He's a very talkative guy. All day long he just talks to the people bringing the trash. RV pit stop. Filled a couple jugs and now we fill the camper with filtered water. Because we're camping in the desert and there's no free water, so it's filtered well water here. So for some reason today, the price was a little bit different. It was, excuse me, I was just distracted by a terrible flag. Um, the other day we paid $13 for a dump and a fill, seven and six for dump and fresh. But today it was eleven twenty-one for some reason to dump and fill. I guess it depends on who you're talking to. 
they do charge by the size of your rig. So we've got a smaller rig, don't need as much water, so pay a little bit less for that. Bill found me this really inexpensive grabber, $3, and I found out it's perfect for grabbing rocks. Little red one. I'm dangerous now. I'm going to be able to find all the good rocks. That's poop. You don't want that. When you live in a small space, a small camper, sometimes the weather is not perfect and you can't be outside. We have a gorgeous campsite, very private. Even though there's a lot of people camping out here, our little site is very private. We're right on a wash with a beautiful rock fire pit and these those green trees. And it's really cool. But today is a very, very windy day, horrendously windy and a little bit chilly. It's sunny, but it's a little bit chilly. So sitting outside is really not gonna work. And inside the camper, we can only keep the windows open just a tiny crack uh, because we don't want them, the wind to take them and they go flying off. So some days you kind of end up being, you know, stuck in the camper, even though you're in a beautiful place. So in those instances, I sometimes come out and just relax in my vehicle. Relax in the truck here. It's got the world's most comfortable seat. I've got my drink. I've got my headphones so I can listen to an audiobook. I've got sunshine. And I could crack the window a little bit if I want a little bit of uh, that fresh air. But I feel like I'm outside. Yet I'm in my, my truck. So sometimes you just hang out in the truck. Sometimes a lot of times we eat in the truck. Sometimes we can play games in the truck. It's just... It's just one of the one of the comfortable places that you can exist when you're spending your whole day living in a small space outside, but you can't be on the outside because Mother Nature is not very kind all of the time. Get out of town See the beautiful world around Wanna see it now Pack our bags and get in that car Leave a little note and we'll drive real far